So the big question is this, how do investors like us who trade options and manage our own money generate income regardless of where the stock market goes and do it all in a way that lets us make time for the people and things we love and yet still build wealth and remain profitable? That's the question and this podcast will give you the answer. I'm your host, Kirk Duplessis, and you're listening to The Daily Call from Option Alpha. Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com, and welcome back to The Daily Call. Today, we're going to be doing a quick guide to the Amex, which is the American Stock Exchange, and just kind of giving you a little history on what it is and what it's come to be and who owns it now, basically. I think it actually has a very cool history. When you start digging into some of these stock exchanges, it's just absolutely fascinating how these things kind of came about naturally or organically back in the early 18 or late 18th century and and through the early 19th century. It's kind of amazing, actually. So right now, though, the Amex is the third largest exchange, I think, still by volume. It was acquired about 10 years ago, I think, by NYSE. And so now NYSE basically owns it, but there's still a lot of things that are traded on the Amex. It does a lot of small cap and mid cap, a lot of ETFs, a lot of derivatives still get traded on the Amex. When you actually route your orders through any broker platform like Thinkorswim or Tastyworks or Interactive Brokers, they can still get routed through the Amex if you do like best fill. You can actually... In most platforms actually designate where you want the order to go to. And in some cases, if you wanted to go to Amex, you could, but usually you just do best fill or it's done best fill on the back end. The history of it, though, is actually kind of crazy. So the Amex used to be, or I guess where it kind of came out of was what it's called curbstone brokers. So back in like the early 1900s, even probably before the 1900s, there were traders in the streets who were known as curbstone brokers that really would specialize in some of these emerging market or small companies, right? And people would literally trade in the streets. Like they would be railroad guys and oil guys there, and they would trade with one another literally in the streets over this. And of course, naturally, that was insanely disorganized. There was no regulations, no standard of contract size. It was just kind of like a free for all. But I mean, this was really the early days of kind of these markets and these exchanges developing or maturing from something, you know, something else. So then later on, they kind of organized themselves into this, you know, New York, what is called the New York Curb Market Agency, which was, again, just an agency of brokers and and traders, basically, who decided to have their own kind of rules and regulations and framework around trading practices. But then later in the 1930s, they became actually the New York Curb Exchange. So they actually adopted a totally new set of principles. They had an actual trading floor. They started actually, you know, trading on a much larger scale, billions of dollars even at that point. And they started to become a lot more sophisticated, which eventually got changed, I think, in the 1950s or 1960s, maybe, officially to the Amex and started trading kind of in that space. So so it's a, actually a crazy history that's taken almost maybe like 70, 80 years or so to actually get to the Amex from its original roots. But the idea, if you actually do a lot of reading, there's a lot of research papers out there and a lot of good old historical articles on these curbstone brokers. And I mean, it's just crazy what they would do and how far they would travel with all their stock tickets and their stock receipts and everything every single day. It's actually kind of amazing. Maybe we're going to be the curbstone brokers or the curbstone traders to automated trading in the future, right? Like people are going to look back and be like, I can't believe that people actually used to click and choose and you know make decisions with their mouse. And with their brains versus, you know, making it mostly automated through through bots. So maybe that's what will be in the future. I think the coolest thing, though, about the Amex is that it was the original place where the S&P 500, the Spider index was actually introduced. It was actually the original place where that ETF was actually traded. So I think it was 1993 was it was originally traded on the Amex, which was kind of crazy. So that was maybe the beginning. They could definitely be seen as the very, very beginning kind of godfather of index ETF trading or or that kind of avenue that the markets have gone since then, which is absolutely completely blown up. And I do like all the ETFs that are out there now and how we can trade options on them. So but they were kind of the first uh, pioneers in that venture. So as always, hopefully it's good to uh, just get a little history on, you know, kind of where things have come. And again, another little perspective that's not necessarily so options specific focused on strategies and techniques and adjustments, but a little bit of history, I think is always important and helpful. So if you guys have any other questions about other things that we can go over and other history events or other you know, exchanges or, or general market questions, I'd love to know. Let me know at optionalpha.com slash ask where you can leave me a message and leave me a recording. 
Those always get first priority in the daily call. So if you want your question asked, get it there, optionalpha.com slash ask. Until next time, happy trading. Thanks for joining us on the daily call. Be sure to subscribe right now for more daily options trading ideas, strategies, and tactics to help you learn how to play smarter, more profitable trades. And if you like what we're doing, don't forget to give us a rating and a review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on the daily call from optionalpha.com.